I decided to visit my acquaintance, Mr. Smith, on the morning after Christmas. Upon arriving, I found him seated by the crackling fire, wrapped in his distinctive purple dressing gown. A weathered hat, alongside a magnifying glass and forceps, rested on a nearby chair, indicating yet another of Smith's curious investigations. Am I interrupting? I asked upon entering. Not at all, Smith replied, nodding towards the hat. The matter at hand is rather simple, yet intriguing. Please, take a seat and warm yourself, it's bitterly cold outside. Is this hat tied to some criminal activity? I inquired. No, not at all, Smith chuckled. It's one of those odd occurrences that arise in a bustling city like ours. Every imaginable scenario plays out amidst such a populous setting, presenting us with fascinating puzzles devoid of criminal intent. Do you know Peterson, the commissioner? Yes, I'm familiar with him, I confirmed. Well, this hat belongs to him, or rather, he stumbled upon it, Smith continued. Its true owner remains a mystery. Let us examine it as an intellectual challenge. On Christmas morning, Peterson discovered this hat, accompanied by a plump goose. The goose is likely roasting in Peterson's kitchen as we speak. Here are the facts. Around four o'clock on Christmas morning, Peterson encountered a tall figure carrying a white goose along Tottenham Court Road. A scuffle ensued, during which the man's hat was knocked askew. Peterson intervened, prompting the man and his assailants to flee, leaving behind the hat and the goose. However, the goose's true owner remains unknown. Did Peterson not identify the owner through the attached card? I queried. No, Smith replied. While the card bore the name Mrs. Henry Baker, it's a common name, and there are countless individuals by that name in London. Peterson, aware of my penchant for unraveling mysteries, brought the hat and goose to me. I kept the goose until this morning, returning it to Peterson for his dinner. But the challenge lies in identifying the true owner of this hat. Did the gentleman who lost the goose place an advertisement in the papers? I asked. No, Smith shook his head. Our task is to ascertain his identity. And what better way than by scrutinizing this hat? Taking the hat in hand, I examined it closely. It was a nondescript black hat, worn and weathered, with the initials HB inscribed on the lining. Despite its apparent insignificance, Smith insisted that every detail held significance. You see, Smith began. By observing closely, one can deduce a wealth of information. This hat, for instance, reveals much about its former owner. Placing the hat upon his own head, Smith proceeded to expound upon his deductions with remarkable clarity. He discerned that the hat's wearer possessed a keen intellect, though recent financial struggles had beset him. Furthermore, signs of neglect suggested a decline in self-respect, perhaps exacerbated by marital discord. Intriguing, I remarked, though somewhat baffled by Smith's deductive prowess. It's all a matter of observation and logical deduction, Smith explained. 
one must simply train oneself to observe and interpret. Now, let us delve further into this mystery. Our discussion was interrupted by the sudden entrance of Peterson, the commissioner, who bore a look of astonishment. The Goose, Mr. Smith, the Goose. Peterson exclaimed breathlessly. Has it come back to life and flown away? Smith quipped. No, sir, but look what my wife discovered within its stomach, Peterson exclaimed, presenting a glittering blue stone. By Jove, Peterson, you've stumbled upon a treasure. Smith exclaimed. This is no ordinary stone. It is the blue carbuncle, the very jewel stolen from the Countess of Morcar. Smith proceeded to recount the details of the jewel robbery, connecting it to the bizarre chain of events involving the lost goose and the mysterious hat. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, it became apparent that a grave injustice had occurred one that Smith was determined to rectify. In the end, justice prevailed, and the true culprit was apprehended. With the mystery solved, Smith reflected on the season of forgiveness, emphasizing the importance of compassion and understanding. And now, Doctor, Smith declared, let us embark on another investigation, one in which a bird once again plays a pivotal role, albeit in a more culinary context. Our dinner awaits. And with that, Smith and I departed, leaving behind the warmth of the fire and the remnants of a most peculiar case, resolved through keen observation, logical deduction, and a touch of holiday magic.